Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to Muslim Spaces Friday Khutbah and Jum'ah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, in Ahmadu, and a starin, who and a stofil, who when I would be lah in Shururi and Fusina, who in Sayati Amalina, my yad hilla, who fella mudilla, who am I you little who fella had the other, was shadow and la ilaha illa law, Wahdahu la sharika lahu, was shadow and na Muhammad and Abduhu, or a Sulu, Sallallahu alayhi was seldom. All praise due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We, with whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our own bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one having no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Allah's servant and messenger. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim Rabbi shrah li sadri wa asil li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli Again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu for everyone, wherever you may be joining us from, or if you may be seeing this recording, inshallah, in the future. Uh, so we often hear the saying to know ourselves. I know that I am someone that often repeats it at something that we see in our traditions, uh, in our hadith and uh, in philosophy, but what does it mean? You know, is it, does it just mean that uh, I know my myself, that I know my name is such and such? I know that I'm Usama. I know that I'm here in Austin. I know that I work here. I do this. I do that. Um, is it is it that? Uh, or we think about it in the sense that when we hear traditions lifting up the sacred element of knowing oneself, we hear it in, as I mentioned, in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu saying the one who knows themselves knows their Lord, or you hear it uh, in Greek uh, philosophy of know thyself. But what does it really mean to know ourself? What does it really mean to know oneself, especially as someone who believes in God or in a higher power? So for philosophers, the self knowledge was a bit of self psychology was a bit of uh, psychology it was a branch of knowledge among other things you have knowledge of uh, of other things uh, but for the mystics of islam but for the mystical tradition the knowledge of self was something that was much deeper than the soul it was it was something that was seen as an ultimate goal uh, of this mysticism and so uh, seeing that there's so much more to it than just a knowledge of i am uh, that there's so much that that is to unpack in that I am that relates to one's own self, that relates to one's connection to the environment and the world around them, and that relates ultimately to the divine. So going off of our last conversation, uh, remember that we were talking about the path back to God, uh, which begins, it doesn't even start physically in, in any sense, but it begins with this basic res recognition that there is a God and that God is. So regardless of what our relationship with God might be, regardless of where we may fall on the theological perspective, that God is, just that God is. And then we center this element of knowledge. We center this element of knowledge, and now we turn to ourselves as we look at this hadith that we, that we lifted up, uh, which is an equation of sorts that says the one who knows himself knows their Lord. So what we can deduce from this is that the search of knowledge Knowledge in and of itself is seen as one of the most central concepts in our faith, in Islam. Uh, the Quran lifts up that are those equal, those who know and those who do not know. Uh, Rumi comments on this that, oh, my brother, you are nothing but knowledge. Other than this, you will only be bones and flesh. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu says, uh, with respect to seeking knowledge, it's a very uh, often quoted hadith that the search for knowledge is something that's incumbent upon every Muslim and uh, in other traditions, uh, some weaker traditions that to go as far as China in the search of knowledge, um, to, to kind of see the emphasis upon this, this aspect of knowing, this gaining of knowledge. And as we know in the first revelation of Islam, the first revelation of the Quran uh, to the Prophet Muhammad, uh, in Surah Al-Alaq, uh, uh, um, we have that you have uh, 
this concept of God being a, cre a creator that is concerned with knowledge, a knowing God that uh, recite in the name of your Lord who created and the, your Lord who taught humanity what humanity did not know. And so uh, it's, 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 very, it's very prudent for us to understand that when we say knowledge and when we say know ourself, when we say uh, know thyself or know God, that it's not just about going to a book looking at a definition, and now you've read it, and now you know God, that there's so much more to this knowing or this aspect of knowledge, at least from the Islamic lens. Uh, the Quran talks about how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I created uh, of the jinn and of, the, of humanity only that they might worship me. And many commentators like Ibn Abbas have actually lifted up that the Prophet uh, was uh, when, 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 had, uh, when they had heard this, that the Prophet had referred to the meaning of this to be uh, that worship is actually knowledge. So to worship me equates to know me. Uh, so when we think about our current conceptions of knowledge, our current concept of knowing, uh, we, we think of it a bit more uh, deeply and a bit more um, uh, a bit more profoundly with respect to the tradition. So uh, as we as we mentioned, knowledge is something that's seen as the goal of the creation of humanity. Uh, but this is a goal that doesn't have a end and it's not limited. Like I said, you can't uh, just say like, I now have, I know that there is certain things. I know that there's God. I know that there is, uh, you know, humanity. I know these things. It's not sufficient to just know. It's not just sufficient to just full stop. This knowing is something that's actually quite more dynamic. Uh, in the Quran, uh, we're taught the prayer that's oftentimes lifted up of Rabbi Zidni Ilma, that uh, my Lord increase me in my knowledge. Um, and that's why in contrast to uh, many other folks who may just emphasize uh, the aspects of uh, love and, and, and centering other aspects of simple knowledge, uh, we, we see that uh, many of the traditionists, many of the, the mystics actually emphasize this knowledge, not just as a literal knowledge, but as something that is a way to reconnect uh, ourselves to the divine. And so rather than digressing further into the semantics of knowledge and the ether of its facets, I want to instead focus on this element of knowing and of knowledge of oneself. And this idea that we can get to, uh, that we need to know ourselves in order to know God and how we can practically engage in this practice and in this endeavor, because it can be quite daunting or it can be, you know, uh, fall flat on its face when I say know yourself. You may just say, well, I already know myself because I know these things. Uh, or if I try to say a little bit deeper that, no, you need to know yourself, it may go completely over your head. So we want to try to conceptualize it. And I was reading uh, this, a French author had written that uh, with respect to critiquing this aspect of knowing yourself or knowing thyself, uh, this author wrote that a caterpillar that seeks to know itself would never become a butterfly. Uh, and it alludes to the fact that if we take the importance of change in our lives seriously, knowing ourself is and becomes something much more dynamic. It's not just something very static or finite. Um, we might be able to know what we think of ourselves in this moment, uh, but what we think of ourselves is very different um, from very from actually who we are and who we may, may actually um, become. And so uh, in a couple of days or weeks, we might change. And so when we say know yourself, uh, it, it, it gives this, uh, th this false equivalency that it's going to be stuck, that you know who you are. And that way, you know, you know who you will be, you know who you were, you know all of these things. But when we just say know yourself, uh, we sometimes do it a disservice with our current uh, way of putting it about, that this knowing is actually much more dynamic. Um, knowing oneself, and as stated uh, in cliche, it can be an obstacle to acknowledging and making peace with constantly changing values, this constantly changing word. When we say that we need to know God, uh, knowing God exists is, is the full stop there. So it's the first thing that we had talked about, to, to just know that God is there. But as the Quran lifts up with respect to acting on this, that our pillars of worship, our acts of worship, our, uh, our contributions to our society are forms of remembering God. 
So we see that remembrance is something that's dynamic, that we know that God exists. We know certain things, but we act on these things. We, we act on this knowledge. This knowledge is not just something that we know, we footnote it, and it's never to be seen again. Uh, this knowledge is something that plays deeply into our life. And so uh, when we think about knowing God, uh, our knowledge of God or our knowing of God is not just that we know God, that's it. We know God, and so therefore, we choose to do certain things. We choose to help people. We choose to uh, act out in certain ways that benefits people. We choose to pray. We choose to do these things. And as the Quran tells us, we choose to remember Allah so that our hearts may find rest. We, we act on this knowledge. So when we talk about knowing oneself, how are we to think about it in the same light? That when we know ourself, when we come to know ourselves, is it just a state of being that now, hey, I know myself, so I'm, I'm all squared away? Or is it something more dynamic? And as I mentioned, knowing yourself is much easier said than done. Uh, so how, how do we tangibly approach this subject? How do we dissect it? Can we ever truly know ourselves? Um, I want to propose a few things for us just to remember as we climb this mountain um, and this journey of knowing yourself. This is a journey that we all take individually because it's you and yourself. Uh, it's something that other people may help you with. But ultimately, it's a journey that you take on. Uh, and I'm hoping that some of these may feel pretty obvious or self-evident, but as we unpack it, uh, that something just as deep as knowing yourself, we'll see not just how uh, profound it is, but how much it actually uh, benefits us when we when we truly begin this search, when we truly endeavor to know ourselves. Uh, it's not just that we spend time in isolation, and just think, well, who am I? Or star staring into a mirror and being like, I think I know who I am now. Uh, but we see how intentional this practice is that it actually brings about a benefit, not just for ourselves, not just for the people around us, not just for our relationship with God, but all of these things collectively. So first thing in, in, this, in these uh, various steps that we'll lift up, first and foremost, know whose you are. So refer back to what we had talked about last, last week, but now we, we draw the connection. So when we begin to know ourself, beginning needs to uh, begin with our own beginning, our own origin. We know that God is not stagnant, that uh, we remember that God created us and that God uh, brought forth um, our creation, uh, but that God did not just create us and then leave, that God is always present. When we say we know whose we are, whose we are is that Allah is still uh, the one to whom we belong. And as long as we are, so too Allah is and beyond that. We know that each of us came from the womb of a woman, but before that in our faith, we know and we believe that our souls had originated with the divine. And from Allah, we came and were created. And to Allah, we belong and will return. And so we discussed this, as I mentioned last time, and we can't begin to know who we are until we fundamentally recognize uh, whose we are. And we cannot know whose we are until we fundamentally acknowledge that God is and that God exists. So as I mentioned, wherever our relationship with God might be, notwithstanding, whatever it may be, if it's in a good place, if it's in a bad place, if we're doubting, if we're you know, in, in, in a great place, wherever we might be, just knowing and acknowledging that God exists. And because God exists, that we know that we as a creation of God exist as well. And so we know that the journey of life and this journey that we're taking is never truly alone then when we know and acknowledge that God is there. We might not agree with how we feel that God is present in our life or not present, that certain bad things may happen, certain things might happen that make us doubt God, but at the base root that we build this belief on, that we build this knowledge upon, we believe that God is still there. And how? How should, we, how should we incorporate this knowledge? How should we begin to know whose we are? Do just like the Prophet ﷺ did, take spiritual retreats. They don't have to be specifically related to going to a mosque and doing itikaf. They don't have to be anything with respect to, um, you know, very, very Muslim -y in that sense. They can be spiritual retreats. You can go spend time in nature. The Quran says to travel the earth to ponder and reflect upon the various signs of the earth. Think about uh, the different parts of nature. Think about the different things that are going on and reflect upon them. The Quran lifts up this element of reflection to think uh, because in these signs, in these creations, you will find the, uh, the, the reason for why, or at least the, um, the belief 
uh, the certainty that there is God, that there is something much more than just all of this. And so, as we mentioned last time, when we say even the phrases like Alhamdulillah or MashaAllah uh, or Bismillah, remembering that, why do we say those? Who, who do we say it for? Um, just to note that there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that says that no action is considered complete unless Bismillah is said with it. So just thinking about the psychology of, uh, you know, when you are living out faithfully, if you take the name of Allah to start, then nothing is truly completely finished until you invoke Allah, you start with Allah. And all things, when you say Bismillah, you conclude it, you say Alhamdulillah um, or SubhanAllah or anything else. So you start with God and you end with God, but just psychologically building that relationship. Number two, know what you are. Uh, so not to expound on this too much, because we can go down quite a bit of a rabbit hole, but knowing what we are helps ground us in this idea of actually knowing ourself. Literally, fundamentally, we want to ask, what are you? From faith and from science, we know that we are created beings. We are mortal. Uh, we're humans or, you know, homo sapiens in our species. Uh, we uh, know that our DNA and its relation to the rest of the created beings on this earth, uh, we, we can see how we may have come about uh, with respect to our creation. We, we know that at, we are rooted in this earth, but that we are finite created beings. Um, but there's, there's a wisdom in being able to further expound upon this, to read and learn about the science behind our bodies, behind the existence of creation, because we can see within the Quran and the parallels within uh, modern science uh, of the finiteness of our creation, but also of the sacredness of our creation. Um, as the Prophet Muhammad and the Quran have instructed to seek knowledge, to take to take forth this knowledge. This knowledge is not just to, uh, you know, specifically in the uh, religious sphere or of one action, but also in knowing ourselves, we want to uh, understand how we came about. We want to understand our, uh, just our, uh, our, you know, basic limitations. What, what are some things that we do? What are some things that we can't? So just knowing what we are helps to understand when we know ourselves, because otherwise we can get lost uh, in many different streams of thought, but at least knowing what we are gives us a foundation as well to go forth. Three, apart from knowing whose we are, apart from knowing what we are, knowing our humanity, and I put our in a parentheses here, so knowing humanity, knowing our humanity. So once we acknowledge and accept that we're not immortals, we, we will all at some point uh, experience death, we will experience some kind of loss, we will experience harms, uh, that we are created beings, um, we are humans, that we need to turn to knowing humanity. We need to see not just as a concept or an entity uh, in order to know ourselves. And this might be the most difficult because if we have trouble relating to other people, if we have trouble just to try and understand ourselves and our own limitations, this can be a really uh, a murky place to go. But we want to know fundamentally that human beings, as much as we may see on media and in, in other spaces, human beings are uh, in, uh, entities that change. Human beings uh, change and they're not static. Uh, what, what preferences we have, what likes and dislikes we might have might change regularly. Uh, we know we want to come to know what we are capable of for better or for worse. We want to come to know other people. We want to know humanity as an entity. Um, our faith and our existence itself is one that's rooted in being social. Uh, from our ancestors to just the uh, the fundamentals of faith, the, you look at our pillars, many of these are things that are uh, ingrained to be social, uh, knowing that we can make mistakes and that we're capable of good and that we are capable of harm as well. So how do we come to know our humanity? Uh, this is kind of the more psychological aspect of looking into personality tests, building a relationship with a therapist, being ma making uh, normalizing something like uh, therapy and having a relationship to where you can hear yourself and you can be able to interact with somebody uh, in a way that your story and yourself does not get suppressed. Um, discover your, what I found very helpful, your Enneagram number. So Enneagram is a, uh, is also a personality um, metric that, that shows um, what, what personality type you may have. Uh, there's nine personality types according to the Enneagram. Each of us has one root personality type, but we can go into other spaces, but it helps you build this compassion. What, what are your um, main drives? What are your desires? What are your fears? All these different things. Um, so not just knowing what your personality is, but how you interact in the world with other people. 
socialize, make community. This can be especially hard, uh, especially given the last couple of years, but engaging with others and to challenge yourself that as a human, you are part of humanity. And when we remove ourselves from humanity, uh, we, we, we take away uh, one of the elements of our faith. We, we, we see that the Quran does not just address, um, you know, the human in, in the in, in just a singular form when, when sending in an injunction or commanding something or giving an instruction and does not just say, oh, you human, uh, it, it lifts us up as humanity, as a whole, as collecti a collective, as believers, as all of these um, collective, uh, th collective terms. And so knowing ourselves by taking the effort to know other people, by knowing like our own predispositions, our personalities, helps to build upon this actual knowledge of ourselves. So apart from knowing humanity, apart from knowing what we are, apart from knowing whose we are, we now go into knowing our faith. So I can only speak from a Muslim's perspective, but it is fundamental in Islam, in knowing oneself, to also at least know one's faith. And uh, I want to be careful in how I say that because it doesn't necessarily mean everyone goes and now has to become a sheikh or has to become a scholar of Islam or a hafiz or anything like that, um, though that is indeed admirable. Um, this is just saying know that what your faith asks of you at its root, know what your faith expects of you. Know what your faith holds sacred. What are some things your faith holds sacred? What are some things that your faith doesn't hold sacred? Um, what are some things that your faith teaches you um, with respect to how to be in this world, how to be in the private sphere, the public sphere, just in sense? Um, take a look at that. And so don't just study the religion in an aspect where you just go and read the Quran and now you just say, I know it, but look at some context, read it with commentary, engage in community. Uh, Islam was not just meant to be an individualistic religion. It was meant to be a, co a communal uh, religion. Um, and so push yourself and your education uh, alongside that of others. It doesn't have to be just something done alone, but even if you are able to connect with somebody, make this experience with your faith something that is a uh, social experience. It doesn't just, if it's done in complete isolation, you may reach certain conclusions, you may reach certain avenues uh, that, that you know, you may not have the answers for, you may not be able to process them properly. So when you come to a point of difficulty in your faith, which all of us do at some point, having some kind of support mechanism to be able to at least engage with it. You could, you could be the most inquisitive person, the most skeptical person on the earth, but you can still have the most beautiful faith experience because you're asking those questions and able to interact with people to do so. But knowing that knowing your faith requires it to be a dynamic experience as with each of these things. So when you just say, I memorize the five pillars, I memorize the six articles of faith, I know Islam. No, that's not the case. Knowing your faith is, uh, you know what it expects of you, you know these things. And by, uh, by its nature, this knowledge that Islam calls us to do is one that is a active sort of knowledge. And so we act upon this. So we, we, we want to take seriously that, uh, that the things that are here in our faith, the uh, scholarly contributions, any of these things that, are, that exist, that they uh, exist for us to be able to better connect with our faith, but as a result, then better connect with who we are. Um, so when we start to see ourselves in the equation, uh, we, we start to remove that disconnect because a lot of times our parents can give us this, this faith, they can teach us these things and memorize this, go pray like this, do all that. And we, not, we might not be connected to it because it's just not something that we find a direct benefit from. But when we start to insert ourselves, uh, know where your faith addresses you. Know where you feel that uh, the faith talks to you. Find yourself in the faith in different spaces. Uh, and and, and when, it, when you have that uh, investment in it, you'll, you'll see that you can connect to the faith much better rather than it's like a class or a subject that you just feel you have to memorize. Uh, there's something much more personable to it. Uh, and lastly, uh, above all things, this is just a psychological thing to remember as we reach the end of our journey here. Know and remember that this journey is not stagnant. Uh, as we're, we are making the analogy of going up a uh, um, up, up a mountain, um, that there will be changes as there are in a mountain. The, the climb up the mountain goes up and down. Uh, if you've ever climbed a mountain, you'll you'll know that uh, as romantic as it looks in in cartoons and whatnot, it's not exactly that straight or that easy. Um, that there's portions that are flat and rocky. There's portions that uh, are jagged. There's portions that are smooth. There's portions that are completely uh, 90 degrees. And so the higher up that you are going up the mountain, we also know that the difficulty 
increases, that uh, the mountain gets more difficult to climb, the paths get more narrow, uh, the wind starts to blow, uh, all of these things get a little bit more difficult as we get to the top. And so remember that as you're on this journey of self-knowledge, of knowing yourself, of being present to yourself, to be first and foremost, uh, leading with grace, leading with mercy for yourself, that we got to acknowledge that there will be change in our lives. The way we are going on knowing ourselves cannot stay the exact same. Our preferences will change. Our life circumstances might change. Our wealth may uh, go up or down. Our friends that we have currently may not be there tomorrow. Our loved ones that we have today may not be there tomorrow, vice versa. We may not have anybody today, but tomorrow we might have somebody. Knowing that these five things are not gonna guarantee that you'll walk out of here knowing yourself absolutely, because the truth is that we know, uh, our, knowing ourselves is actually a daily practice. Um, its root is that we are fundamentally being present to ourselves and we're aware only uh, not only of ourselves in our feelings, our limitations, but also of our environment, our surroundings. So rather than simply saying to you, know yourself, know yourself and know uh, your Lord, uh, it, we want to change our connotation because the connotation with which it was said was much more dynamic. Um, because if I just say, know yourself or know thyself, this is going to change. And so it may, it may be undervalued. Rather, we want to say, be present to yourself, remember yourself, remember yourself, because through your remembrance of yourself, you remember God. Listen to your bodies, listen to your surroundings, listen to your creator. When you are present with yourself day in, day out, you become to know yourself, that know that this knowledge of oneself is not one that starts and ends at a certain time. It is a active part of our life process. These five reminders may not give us our answer, but inshallah, they'll help us start the process if our intention is sincere, inshallah. And in the final portion of this khutbah, we'll just recap these five uh, things for, for our memory here. So, I say these words of mine and I ask Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. My thanks and gratitude belong to Allah and the Lord of all humanity. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and bestow peace on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So as I mentioned, uh, when we say know yourself or knowing thyself, it can really feel very cliche. That's uh, something that's cool to say, but what does it mean? Um, we, we know that our names are so-and-so. We know that we identify as such. But when we speak of knowing ourselves as the tradition and the mystics of our past did, it's not just so we can have our CVs or our resumes committed to our memory or for any worldly gain for that matter. Uh, it's because knowing who we are gives us access and insight to knowing who our creator is and vice versa. So this know yourself is not just simply flipping a switch and, uh, you know, or a sudden change in our mind or a light bulb that goes off or just an acknowledgement. Uh, it's a lifelong journey that above all requires us to be present to our minds, to our hearts, to our souls, as well as that which is around us and those who are around us, and, uh, and as well as um, those which are not around us, those which are consistently with us. So when we become aware to the needs and desires and limitations and potentials of our hearts, minds, bodies, souls, we become more aware of ourselves. And the five things we discussed, as, as I mentioned, they're not exhaustive. They just help us tackle this idea of knowing oneself is not just a simple thing that I now know myself, I have a badge, so this is who I am, but rather help us start this journey of uh, knowing ourselves. that first and foremost, we know whose we are. Secondly, we know what we are. We know, uh, thirdly, our humanity. We, and when I say no, this is not just saying that you need to know these things. This is saying that uh, we, we, we engage in these processes um, as a part and parcel uh, of, a, of a process of knowledge. It's, we're not going to check each of these off of a box that, oh, hey, I now know who I am. I now know what, uh, what I am. I now know humanity. This is an ongoing process. Uh, so number one, knowing whose you are. Number two, knowing what you are. Number three, knowing your humanity. Number four, knowing your faith. And number five, knowing that the journey is not sustained, not stagnant, but it is sustained by mercy. Uh, this doesn't have to be something that this process of knowing ourselves doesn't have to be something that's completely new or foreign. Um, and it is something that it may it may feel like a burden, but 
what I want to lift up is that you should look for these each of these five things in your routine that you're doing right now. Look at them in your prayers. Look at them in how you interact with your friends. Look at them in your jobs. Look at them in your studies. Look at them in your everyday life. Find yourself when you're praying. Find yourself when you're working. Find yourself when you're interacting with others. Be present to your mind, your body, and soul in these moments. And you won't just know yourself, but you're going to continue to know who you are, who you were, and who you can be. And lastly, don't just know yourself or know who you are. But as we mentioned, lift up the aspect of remember. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. Remember what you are. Remember your humanity. Remember your faith. Remember that the journey is stagnant, is not stagnant, and is sustained by mercy. And of course, at the end of the day, we remember that uh, with Allah, our hearts find rest because something like this can give us a little bit of restlessness. So we remember that uh, Allah is through the uh, through the uh, good and the bad will always be there for us. So inshallah, uh, we may Allah allow us and all of our actions, our thoughts, our surroundings to be reminders for us, our practices, our work, uh, our relationships to be uh, elements through which we can continue to know not and remember not just who we are, but also who God is. And that uh, through this remembrance, uh, we become closer to God, but also become better stewards of our humanity and that which is around us. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyul alim. Our Lord, accept this service from us, for thou art all hearing, all knowing.